Hi again. In this video, I will present the second strategy to build ensemble of tree-based models, namely boosting and gradient boosting. So let's start again uh, with the classification example that we used uh, to introduce bagging. So this is the same training set, training set as previously, uh, with two input features. The location in this two-dimensional space are the input variables for the, the classification model. And the classification task is just a binary classification task of blue versus orange. Okay. So when we train a bagging ensemble, uh, a boosting ensemble, instead of uh, subsampling randomly the training set, we will consider the full training set at once, and we will fit a first classification model using a, a decision tree that is shallow and will underfit intentionally. Okay. So here we will consider we will fit a first decision tree with a depth of, a depth of one and it will uh, decide to, to split vertically up here um, and so it will make some prediction error even on the training set because it's underfitting and those prediction error uh, so you can see that they are here will lead us uh, to reweight re the original training set to give more importance to those three uh, data points in the training set. And so when we do boosting, we train one model at a time and uh, the, the second model will try to predict, to correct the prediction error of the previous models. Okay. So here the prediction errors of the, of the first models were highlighted by giving them a higher weight here such that when we train the second model in the ensemble, it will decide to take an horizontal split here to make it such that it doesn't make a prediction error for those three data points anymore. Okay. But then if you consider the ensemble of those two prediction models here, they classify this uh, data point, this orange data point of the training set as blue. And by doing so, uh, we, will, we will basically uh, put more weight on this prediction error, such that when we train the next tree in the ensemble, it will focus more specifically to not make a prediction error for this one. And we do that iteratively over and over again uh, until we decide that we have converged, uh, for instance, by not making uh, too many uh, prediction errors on the training set. Okay, so those three uh, decision rules here, the three prediction rules for from three uh, small uh, decision trees, uh, are the the, the elements uh, of the boosting ensemble. And you see that we train them iteratively, sequentially, one after the other, to try to predict better. Uh, on the prediction errors of the previous models. So we can illustrate the same concept for regression. So here again, we have a, a y variable that is represented as the target variable here on this y axis. And the input variable is, is the, uh, the x axis on this plot. So if we train uh, a regression decision tree on, on this uh, data set with many uh, variations like this, and we constrain the decision tree to have a limited number of splits, uh, then uh, this decision tree will be forced to make some prediction errors even on the, on the training set. So it is an underfitting uh, regression model. Okay, Here you see that it underfits a lot in this region. So again, uh, we will train sequential uh, model to try to predict better where the, the first model or the previous models made prediction errors. And to do so, we will use what we call reweighting again. So we will give more importance to the training samples that are far away from the prediction function of the previous model. So you see that those samples are far away and will receive a lot of weight. Those samples also uh, to a lower extent, those samples will receive some weight here again and here again. But here you see that those samples that are close to the prediction function will, will receive very few weights. Okay. 
So we reweight the, the training set and we fit a, a second stage model. So this time it's represented with the orange prediction function. And you see that it's focusing its attention on the, the highly weighted uh, training points from the prediction error of the first blue model. And then we will combine the prediction of the first model and the second model uh, to get this new prediction function for the, uh, for the ensemble. So this is the ensemble of those two models. And then we will give weights uh, to the prediction errors of this new ensemble. Okay, so we will put more weights here and here and a bit here also. And we will train a third stage model uh, that will focus primarily its effort on not ma making prediction errors so for the highly weighted prediction samples. And so iteratively, we will refine the, the, the prediction of the ensemble, uh, will refine progressively to remove the, the, the prediction error of the first of, of the previous steps in the ensembles. Okay, again, we reweight, we uh, fit a new, a new tree in the ensemble, and progressively you see uh, that the ensemble predictions are better and better, they, over, they underfit less and less. This model was underfitting a lot. This new ensemble, slightly bigger ensemble, is underfitting a bit less, a bit less, and even less here in this case. So, uh, to, here represented a strategy to do boosting using reweighting of the training set at each step. And this strategy using weight uh, is called what we call Adaboost, the Adaboost classifier or the Adaboost uh, regressor by using reweighted uh, learning procedure at each step. And you can use Adaboost classifier or Adaboost regressor using any base model that supports the sample weight attribute. Okay, so for instance, logistic regression, tree based models, they support this kind of uh, uh, sample weight. So you could use, you could build a, boot, a boosting uh, ensemble, an Adaboost ensemble, uh, for any kind of scikit-learn model that support the sample weight. But if you want to focus on decision trees, uh, we can make something that is even more computational, computationally efficient, uh, but is specialized for uh, decision trees as a base uh, model. And in particular, this is what we called uh, gradient boosting and a variation which is called histogram gradient boosting which is uh, much faster and much more powerful in practice. So nowadays, I would not recommend to use Adaboost anymore. It's useful to introduce the concept of boosting because it doesn't require a lot of mathematics. But in practice, we will use a variation called gradient boosting and a histogram gradient boosting in particular um, that is more complex to explain uh, in details. So this is what I, uh, why I do not do it in this video. But the main idea is to uh, is that these models will predict the negative errors of the of the previous models in the ensemble, and then when we sum the prediction errors, the predictions of all the elements in the ensemble, the the errors of the previous models will be cancelled out by the prediction of the next models in the ensemble. And that will make the, the, the aggregate ensemble prediction better than the individual predictions. And, and so in scikit-learn, uh, typically for a histogram gradient boosting classifier, we, we force the, the base model to be decision trees. Okay. And this is what I will recommend uh, as the, the, the go-to implementation for, for boosting in scikit -learn. So as I've said previously, the histogram gradient boosting classifier in scikit-learn is, is uh, more computationally efficient, but it's also possible to use what we call gradient boosting classifier in scikit-learn, which is an implementation of the traditional gradient boosting algorithm or the exact method. And it works fine for small data sets, or let's, let's say if you have a couple of thousands of data points, but it tends to be too slow when you go above uh, 1,000 data points as a rule of thumb. Okay, 
So if you're if you're dealing with a large training set, then then I will strongly recommend to instead use the histogram gradient boosting classifier. And it's much faster because it preprocesses the numerical features to uh, work in a coarse approximation of 256 levels by default. So this is what we call binning. And once it has discretized or binned the input features, then it can um, uh, work much more efficiently, especially on multi-core machines, by what computing what we call histograms to approximate uh, the, the the best split this uh, when we build the decision trees so it doesn't need to sort the the features by values and it uses histogram as an approximation for sorting and this makes it much much faster when we deal with a large uh, number of samples in the training set okay so the main takeaway from from this lesson is that there are mainly two families to build uh, ensembles of uh, base models and in particular ensembles of decision trees. The first family is called bagging for bootstrap aggregating. And when we specialize it for, run, for decision trees, we have a random forest as a special example. Uh, but for any bagging uh, ensemble, we will fit individual models independently on random subsample. Uh, yes, subsets of the of, of the original training set, and if you use decision trees, you will tend to use deep decision trees, so very very large trees with many splits, and each of those trees will overfit individually, but by taking the average of the prediction, we can cancel out the overfitting of the in individual decision tree, and the ensemble as a whole will not overfit much anymore. Okay, if you take many trees in the ensemble. The alternative strategy, which is kind of the opposite, in philo philosophically the opposite in a way, is to fit individual trees sequentially instead of uh, independently. So to fit the second tree in a boosting ensemble, you need to have access to the prediction error of the first uh, tree in the ensemble. Whereas for bagging, you could fit them independently. There is no dependency between the, 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 the different trees. But then in boosting, you would then use uh, shallow decision trees that individually underfit. But because the trees correct their prediction error of one another uh, sequentially, we, could, we can reduce the underfitting behavior of the, uh, the previous stages of the ensemble. And in practice, we would tend to use gradient boosting. And gradient boosting tends to work a bit better than bagging or random forest. And furthermore, because uh, if you consider a gradient boosting ensemble of 100 decision trees, be because the individual decision trees of a boosting ensemble are shallow, they tend to predict much faster because they are they when they make a prediction they just have to go through a few prediction uh, splits okay whereas for bagging we would use deep deep trees so if you have a 100 uh, ensemble uh, with a 100 decision trees since the individual decision trees uh, are more computationally expensive the aggregate is also more computationally expensive so that makes a difference in practice. If you deploy your machine learning model at scale, you want the machine learning model to predict as fast as possible and to use as few energy as possible for the, making the prediction. So this is why boosting algorithms are more favorable uh, at prediction time. They are faster at prediction time. And furthermore, they tend to be also slightly better uh, from a prediction accuracy point of view. All right. So this is all what I wanted to say for ensembles of decision trees.